So here I have created two different scenarios for the demo purpose. One is rational Stormcat scenario. So that is a, a beauty of this sort of product. Like it will let you define multiple scenarios over there. Here under drainage and utilities tools, you will find these four options that we talked about. So yes, let's go ahead and uh, validate and compute the model. Validation will help you in determining any data entry issues. Okay, now since we have the basic Stormcat 100 inlet option uh, activated already within civil product, we have got the message like, yes, you cannot compute the model and you need to switch your license. And uh, since it is Stormcat scenario or a rational method scenario, we will go ahead and select Stormcat unlimited license to compute the model successfully. Okay, so for that purpose, just click on the Stormcat unlimited option over there and it will open up the feature level selector. Now, when you're dealing with the feature level, you need to be sure about a few things. Like there are different kinds of licenses. Uh, for example, perpetual license, what your company owns for you. And if you are on like uh, select open access or you are like on ELS subscription, then you will have other options available to you as well. But that will be depending upon how you're using them and uh, if it is perpetual or it is subscription based licenses so you have to be quite sure about that when selecting the license so here you will see that in case of stormcat we have got 25 inlet option 10 inlets and directly unlimited after 100 inlets so that's the reason we see over there stormcat unlimited option but for others it is only the solver name so here in the license checking availability of the license, you will be asked to check with your administrator if required. If you are sure about that, then just click on no and go ahead. For now, I know that, so I'll go ahead and click no. And then again, we'll be prompted about, do you want to go ahead with this unlimited inlet option? Yes, we will uh, select yes for that. And then unlimited license will be activated for our usage. Select yes, and then if you click on this blue uh, thing over here, you can see who are the administrator for your company. So that is also possible from this window. So I already clicked yes for that. So let's just wait for the license to get activated. It is selected over here. I will click on done for now. And when you are switching between the licenses, it internally it will again uh, reopen the drainage file for you. So you can see that file. Uh, uh, dialog opening file likewise so now i see stormcat unlimited only the option over there which means that it is the selected option for now and we need to go ahead with that so let's go ahead and compute the model okay so validation part is already done so we will get directly go and compute the model since there are no issues in validation we went ahead and computed the model but be sure about validating for any data entry issues before computing the model, right? So we can see here the calculation summary, so which means computation is successful and we can just close it, right? So here there are different tools available, like you can open the flex table, you can open the profile. Flex table will help you in determining different reports for different elements like conduit reports or catch basin report, all can be visible through Flextable. There is a model builder tool which will help you in uh, importing any existing data in the form of DGN or DWG or Excel files, and it will directly create the model for you based on that data. Navigator will help you through navigating the model and determining or tracing any problem areas. And uh, let's talk about uh, like, what rational solver is based on first you need to select uh, the default design constraint that i mentioned initially like cover for your pipe or um, inlate uh, controls or what should be the slope can give the criteria within minimum and maximum values over there so design only between these two values right so you can see it options over here is a part full design do you want it to be 
100% full pipe or you want it to be 75% 80% full so that should depend on your regional guidelines right so i'll go ahead and open the profile for your view so here you will see how much is the pipe full since it is a peak flow based design it will not be kind of dynamic and you will be seeing the pipe sizes for the peak flow calculations only for the rational or storm cap solver right so that was about Stormcat drainage license. Let's go ahead and uh, select Civil Storm. So I have already selected that scenario. I clicked on that and uh, let's click on Civil Storm from Tools window under Drainage and Utilities. The thing you will observe here is that since I already had the Civil Storm license selected externally before this demo, I will not be asked to select feature level again. But if you don't have Civil Storm installed or you didn't select the feature level earlier, you'll be asked to select the feature level again, just like uh, that did for the Stormcat Unlimited license. Okay, so when that license is clicked, you will be able to see only the Civil Storm icon over here. So that will confirm you that yes, the particular license is selected. Uh, so this is good. Uh, this model contains few ponds are there. We have got pond control structures. We have got catch basins and everything. So implicit solver is good for this kind of conditions. So if you see here in the drop downs, rational, explicit, and implicit solvers are available options. For now, we'll go ahead with implicit dynamic wave solver, which is a Bentley designed solver, and swim should be from EPA swim, right? See these three options over here. All right, so we'll go ahead and compute the model now. Validation, as mentioned, is required. So it was green signal from validation side. So we'll go ahead and compute the model now to see the results, which could be like in the form of profiles, like graphs. Graphs can be plotted for any element that you wish to see for, like pond, there is a catch basin, there is a cross section. For every element, you can see the individual graph, or you can combine multiple elements of same kind and see the graph for that. See uh, the calculation summary can be seen over here. We see the continuity error of 1.5%. So anything below 5% is good to go with. So yes, uh, these are the good kind of results that we can expect from a model. We can just switch between detail summary, like catchment summary, node calculations, uh, flow going through a node, conduit kind of that. So we'll go ahead and close out this. And uh, I think we should have a look at uh, some graphs for, to visualize the results. So for that purpose, uh, I have already created a graph for this demo purpose. So we will go, go to utility view and graph manager. So click on the graph one. Now you will see this is a graph for a pond one. So I'll show you that in the model area. But here, let's first understand what this graph is about. So this blue line, you see on the upper side is about hydraulic grade and this red line below is flow coming into the pond and green line is flow going out of the pond. So you will see a difference between flow coming in and flow going out because the pond is doing its work. It is storing the rest of the water. And as for the control structures like weir levels and orifice levels, it will release the water as required. You can also scroll through the time browser, but it is beautiful when you're working with the profiles, the time browser thing. Here you can see the data tab as well. So let's go ahead and uh, like open any of the profile to view. So yes, this is the pond one that actually we uh, opened the graph for. So you can see it up here in the model part. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, open the profiles. So this is the profile, how it looks from the drainage part. So drainage license part, the profile will be visible in this way. So when now I scroll through the time browser, see how the flow through the pipes changes as we move ahead. So you can observe that as we are at the end of the simulation, the flow is more, it is reaching the conduits lately. So that kind of visualization is possible with dynamic solvers. So it's a good one to go with. On the downside, you will see slope of the conduits, invert level, like ground elevations, on the profile, you can see the labels and the lesion is there. What does green line mean? What does red line mean? So that kind of things. So let's just close it.
I'll show you a few other options for profiles, like the one that you or civil products are having. Opening the profile into a different view. So this is also one option. You can again give uh, naming uh, like uh, annotations like you do for the other corridors and other uh, cross-section things. And there is one more option called engineering profile. So here in engineering profile, you can have option to decorate that with multiple annotation options available in between. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.